Okay, hi, my name is Josue Ramirez. I'm a cultural organizer with Blue Char GV. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, and uh, I am here at my show, Who's the Bandit, at the South Texas College Mid Campus Library Gallery. And so, thank you all for having me. I'm doing a small artist talk, uh, giving an intro how I got started in the work, but it revolves around my advocacy in housing and my work and around my artistry, which is multidisciplinary. And so, I talked a little bit about my my how this started and then i'm just gonna just push forward and i guess i'll start off with this piece which is called uh the home is where the heart is it's basically a reinterpretation of a quilt the idea of a quilt uh, uh and using these repurposed uh signs basically cutting them up into patterns uh and so the idea of the quilt basically you know comfort safety um protection covering uh, and also very like American uh, in terms of the art history of the, the stuff. And so I wanted to point something that was like American, quote unquote, but also told like a, a deeper history or more contemporary history than actuality. And so I use these uh, things to mix them around. Some of them, um, for the most part, are all over the place because I, I wanted to use the colors, right? Um, but I also, some of them are together. So I make sure that. Uh, you know where you are, right? So I maintained the 956s together to show that you're in a certain region location. Um, and I purposely put it in the heart as many as I could because we're here. Um, and then this is also obviously a house, right? The heart is in the middle of the white picket fence. Uh, and then you have the arrows pressing down, kind of just as like uh, the forces pushing down on the home and the, not only forces as far as like out external, but also just in general, like, like symbolic, like, uh, you know, just the market forces that are actually driving down housing, housing quality, things like that. So that's the idea behind this. It took a while, got cut a lot because they're all sharp. Um, but yeah, now we move on to these uh, collage type work. Um, they're on plywood. And I basically use the signage of the, the signs that I found these all come from the valley so literally i went down the street for over like a year or so uh before i knew what i was doing with them i was just taking them um because they are they're called bandit signs so that's where the name comes from bandit signs they are i didn't come up with the name they that's how they're called and it's not just a problem here it's like a national phenomenon like you know they're like mostly in large cities where housing um there's a lot like more visibility as far as like you'll see people on the streets camping and campus under bridges things like that here we don't see that as often because we have a we're not as urbanized and also there's different structures that keep us housed like family and uh, a lot of people are living with their grandma or their mom and so you have these uh that's how we mitigate uh housing issues or homelessness in our community is that you know, you don't get kicked out. You just go and live with your family and it's still an unsafe housing, you know, for the most part. So, and it's, you know, very Americanized. But uh, for example, the housing and urban development, um, they know they have a certain amount of people that can live in a dwelling. And so when you double up uh, or you triple up, that's not a safe or ideal housing condition for anybody. And so that's how we mitigate housing. So you won't see people on the streets like, but in other cities, in San Antonio, or Austin, you will see this. Um, but this is how manifestation of inequality in housing, this is how we know it's here in the Valley, because these signs are everywhere. And they're not just, they're like popping up, y'all like in the corner of us, like they're everywhere. I literally stopped and took some signs off on my way over here, just because I wanted to use them. But they, I mean, it's an ongoing problem. It's only gonna get more, you're gonna see them more and more. And you're probably gonna start getting mailers if you live in one of these houses in, through the mail and telling you, hey, we buy houses, my friend sent me a picture. He's like, I got this, check it out. And it's like, it's like an interracial couple, but it's like a, a white old man and like this younger uh, wife, I guess. And they're like, we're the blanks, uh, we buy houses. Well, and I'm like, that's the weirdest like marketing tactic in the world. Like, yeah. But I mean, that's uh, different. Most of the time these are like, there's no face to these. That's why it's also like, who's the bandit? Who's behind this? Um, and what I try to get to is that there's a lot of forces and it's maybe we're the bandits too. You know? um, but with these pieces, just kind of 
using the arrows again in the shape of the house and reutilizing the pattern of the arrow to it just naturally becomes a, an arrow down. So when you do the ups and the downs, it becomes the shape of the home. And I use a border to frame it. And it's all like, you know, it's nails. It's like, just get it, cut it, do it. Um, and yeah, so this is like a triptych, again, like pointing to like rising house prices, rising inequity, and also again, the ish, uh, pressure is coming down on, on the general mall. Uh, these pieces over here, uh, this, these are recreations of Roy Lichtenstein. He has a house series. He's a very famous uh, pop artist. He's known for, you know, that, that girl that's like, <gasps> and it's like, oh, I can't, she's drowning. She's like, I can't believe he left me. Uh, well, he got famous for making comics, recreating other people's comics and then sold them for billions. Of Anyways, so he has a series called Houses. He has these structures at, in Washington that they're optical illusions. They look like houses from the front, but when you look them from the side, they're just three panels that make up the illusion of the house. And when you look at it differently, it just is a different shape. And so these are, he has these, I guess, studies of, of those sculptures. And so I recreated them uh, basically with the signs and called them gentrified houses. So it's again, kind of like placing myself in like the larger conversation of art in America, uh, but also about housing and comparing that to what it is now. And these are, I think made in the nineties. And so what do you call it? We could look back at what was housing like in the nineties. How is it now? I didn't do that, but you could, and I invite you to. Uh, so yeah, these are recreations, also very pop art. Um, uh, the colors just happen to, he uses primary colors. And so those were the signs, the, the colors and the signs, so like perfect. Um, then this is American Family Bus. This is one of the first pieces I started using with the silhouettes. This is part of the Amer uh, Amarillo uh, Biennale uh, in Amarillo, Texas. It was a social justice show. And these were meant to be, um, well, initially they were on the floor. So they were like kind of waist deep. And that was my idea. It's like people are like, you know, cemented in these places, stagnant and uh, cut off. And then uh, Betty and I were messing around, joking around. And I was like, they're gay because you can't really tell who the uh, or what the object is. You know, you know, there's uh, two people. So just kind of queering it a little bit. I'm queer. So what do you call it? I was like, yes, they're gay. <laughs> so but you can read it however it is. So it's a reinterpretation of the American family. And this also goes with the housing. I mean, uh, the idea of housing was something that's fairly new, you know, the suburbs didn't exist till the 50s. And then the mortgage, which is how most families get their down payment to, to buy a house. That was all created like a couple of years, like in the 70s. So it's not a long history of something that was created, right? It was made. And who was it made for? It was made for the American family. And the American family is uh, a white man, a white woman, and they're two babies, a boy and a girl for the most part. And so that whole idea of the, the nuclear family and housing and the suburbs is also kind of what I'm trying to clarify through my art and through specifically this portraiture. And then this led to the creation of larger, um, what do you call it, silhouettes, which I call silhouette one, silhouette one, two, three. Uh, but these are kind of life-size portraits of uh, people that might be impacted the most by housing insecurity, by homelessness. Um, so we know <laughs> through data that uh, people, <laughs> that families, <laughs> the young families and people with disabilities are the most impacted by housing insecurity. That's just it. And so uh, I just wanted to draw attention. <laughs> Sorry about I worked in housing, so um, I just remember facing. <laughs> anyway, so that's what these silhouettes mean. And they're kind of also like, um, they're not specific people, but you can think about who they could represent. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a Pisces <laughs> and uh, it, we're full Pisces season and I'm like a double moon. I, I get emotional, but yeah, I know it's uh, and I know that it's like you know, 
not a specific person, but I hope that in the future I can tell the stories of actual people, you know, like paint their portraits kind of like I did with those, uh, but of real people going through housing and security. Talk more deeply about that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, that, that moves us on to like uh, these pieces, which are um, ceramic pieces. Um, and they are my interpretation of what these signs really mean. You know, um, they're not, they're, they're buying houses, but they're buying everything else that goes along with a house. Uh, for the most part, we sell this idea of the American dream through housing. And so what are they really trying to buy? Like they're trying to buy security. They're trying to buy aspiration, happiness, <laughs> futures, you know? And so I wanted to show that and I wanted to show it through ceramics because it's so frail, you know, it's like, um, it's, uh, it can break. It's uh, sturdy, but uh, when it gets in precarious, situations or there's too much tension put on it, it just breaks. And uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot there. Uh, and so uh, with the help of my friend Carla, who, uh, what do you call it, I think it's here, what do you call it, I uh, was able to make these signs and recreate them. So they play on the, the visual language that's in these signs. I basically take it and subvert it into uh, what it really means. And so you'll have uh, we buy futures, and one of my favorite signs is the the dar or the 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 house with a little fish in it. That's like we're Christian people, you know, sell to us, we're good. When in reality, that's you wouldn't be doing that if you were a Christian person and if you had this. And so instead of the fish, oh, which means we're Christianity, I put two little legs on it, so it can be like the symbol of uh, Darwin and uh, survival of the fittest. And because that's really what this is, is like. If you got it, you can buy it. If you don't, you're in some shit out of luck, right? And so, uh, yeah, so we buy futures, we buy hope, we buy compros sueños, we buy happiness. And so I really try to recreate that. Uh, and then uh, some of these phone numbers are hidden messages. So some of them are like 956, big love. Um, some of them are like, uh, some of them are, are phone numbers for SpaceX. Uh, so you can call and bother. Uh, and then some of them are the 467 number is a, a, a multimedia conversation that I want to have with people. But basically, the idea is that uh, you can go ahead and call this phone number 467 uh, 1095. And you're going to get a You're gonna get a voicemail that asks you to uh, that you can tell your dream, and so and that's my phone because it's connected to my phone, so I have to hang it up. Oh. Once you get hung up, then you can leave your tell me your dream, and then a representative will get back to you about buying your dream. And so this is a performance that I want to take further. Uh, it talks really about like, um, you can kind of hear it, but if not, you can, I, I, please come up here, so many your dreams, so many dreams. <laughs> uh, but let's see, I'm going to sell one real quick. What should I sell? I really, uh, you know, I want to be present. Okay, let's see. Hi, this is Jose Ramirez. Uh, I would like to sell my dream of being the American president. Okay. And then they're going to get back to me. And then uh, through this performance, I will basically, uh, my idea is that I want to haggle with people. I want to actually buy your dream and I want to notarize it. And I want that to be another collection of dreams that I have that we can talk about like, well, what does it mean to own dreams? What does it mean to own happiness? Maybe we'll make NFTs. I don't know. Who knows? But I please, I welcome you to call and um, do that because I look forward to. <laughs> Anyways, so we move on to the.
installation, which is a remake of the first video that I have up there, but this is a smaller version. Obviously, this was first installed in Brownsville, in downtown Brownsville, as part of uh, the work with CDCB. And we had that set up uh, for a bit, and then we to another location in uh, Brownsville again with uh, Youth Built, which is an organization that does, uh, they do housing or training around work and they get help kids get their GD that didn't get it through high school uh, through construction and stuff like that. And so this was that set up there, a smaller version, and then I added a bunch of details to it. Uh, that's a multimedia piece, so uh, it will be used probably. Uh, but yeah, just like, this is not even all like, uh, there's so many more signs. Like if you all think there's a lot of signs, I have so many more in my storage unit. Kind of annoying, honestly, I need to get rid of them. <laughs> But I do hope to utilize them. And, so, and one way that I want to utilize them is to kind of uh, at using them in action. And so, and by actions, I mean with uh, political organizers or organizers in the Valley that, uh, you know, call out some of these forces. And so these two are kind of like my uh, take on, so the, the, who's the bandit, right? It's like, uh, well, throughout the exhibit, I've tried to show that it's like, you know, American ideals are the bandit, the idea of white supremacy, patriarchy, capitalism, which is, you know, the idea of the suburbs is the bandit, uh, artists who sell tons of uh, uh, work for tons of money, uh, the idea of housing are the bandit, but then it also manifests in people, like there are people who drive the market, there are people who push at it so that they can benefit off of it in some way. And so I wanted to also like draw attention to that because there are some individuals that literally are in positions of power that uh, are causing a lot of this too. And so this is a portrait of a, a gentrifier. This is a recreation of the mural that's in downtown Brownsville that says Boca Chica de Mar. So this is basically, and that was created by an artist here locally named Pop Culture, Popsy Culture. And he does a bunch of portraits, but basically the guy painted a huge Elon Musk in downtown Browser, like Mama Lore. Anyways, so I took his stuff and I made an actual portrait, a more representative portrait, I think, in my opinion, of this uh, guy. And then I also made a much smaller portrait because uh, he's a much smaller man, or what do you call it, in terms of like gravitas and in terms of, he's not the richest man anymore because the freaking mayor of Brown buildings. It's called a uh, portrait of a bootlicker. Uh, basically, shows he is uh, sucking up to these forces for the sake of economic development or for whatever sake, um, and that he is going after activists who are raising their voice against SpaceX and against gentrification and against everything that Elon Musk and his company are doing. And he's basically facilitating the, uh, in my my mind, the recolonization of Brownsville and the rebranding of the organization or the, the city into what they call now New Space City, which brings with it a lot of these people that have the money to pay for houses and cash. And those are who these people are trying to get. These are the people that can go to somebody and be like, you want that house over there, uh, 120,000? Sure, here it is, cash. I'll give you an extra $5,000 finish the closing cost of that. And then they slowly start picking out uh, individuals in those neighborhoods. And then little by little, the, and the identities of the neighborhoods of the region start changing as these outsiders start coming in or they buy the houses to put up in the housing market as rent properties or something like that. And so uh, that's basically what um, I think this portrait is trying to represent. But, yeah, other than that, uh, these are kind of like the main things. And there is a performance art piece, which uh, it's weird because some people are like, when does performance art start? So like, you know, when doesn't it start? Uh, but uh, it'll, well, it'll happen eventually. But these are mostly kind of like the majority of the paintings and the uh, work that I have. And so I hope that you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, just, uh, yeah, let me know.